Good morning, welcome back to our channel. This morning, we have a treat for you. Today's video topic is taking a tour of where you homeschool. And so we're going to take you on a little tour of how our house, our little house works with our homeschooling. Yes, James? No, we're not gonna crack. James is standing here waiting for me to finish eggs. No, no, let's not touch those. We already have your eggs going. Okay, you just wait for mommy. Wait right there, you're doing a good job. Can you say good morning? No. Okay. You want to be in on this? Okay. So we are a family of 10 and we live in a small house. It's just 575 square feet. So we built this little house ourselves. We finished out an old workshop so that we would be able to move to this beautiful property. We have almost 16 acres and one day we will be building a big farmhouse. But for now we are living in this little space. We custom designed it for ourselves which means that every square inch of it has been optimized <laughs> to make it work for us. So I'm gonna show you today how we um, use this space to homeschool our eight kids. We also use the outdoors a lot. As you can imagine, having a lot of people in a small space means that we are outside a lot. So I will show you those spaces as well. So our kitchen and dining room and living room are all one little owl shape. Good job, James. The table is obviously a, the central area that homeschooling happens. Do you need help? Mm, yeah. Flip your, your D around the other way. No. That, that's the B, so flip it around the other way. We use um, computers for math. This is, um, we, we use teaching textbooks and so that happens on computers. We have several laptops. How many laptops do we have, guys? Three? Four. Three that we four, use? Four. And, well, counting yours and the one upstairs. Okay. One, two, three. No. All right. We have one upstairs, but it's it's faltering. It's, a, it's on the oh, verge of death. <laughs> so three down here that we use. Mm -hmm. I have five children who are in the teaching textbooks program right now. And so they take turns with that. We have really fantastic kid headphones that we found that help block sound so they can help you focus. I will put a link to those in the description box if you want to check those out. They were cheap and they are very good at sound blocking for kids who need that. Our couch space is obviously another space that kids will often curl up and do work or Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> and the space underneath our couch, can you help me lift this up? This is actually our toy box. So all kinds of random toys are in there. Okay, let me take you around and show you some of the little organization details that make this space work for us when it comes to homeschooling. This board that hangs here is our checklist for the morning. So all of these things are done for all the kids. They had all their initials here, but they are completely finished with that. So today they need to do a math lesson. They need to do a CBS lesson. Shh, mama's talking, just quiet please. And Jeremiah, I'm working on these two things with him. He is my almost five-year-old. He turns five in a couple weeks. This will only take him like maybe 20 minutes to do the both of those. Bella has an extra assignment for her um, for each teacher. They're not meeting because of um, being quarantined, but she still has been giving out some assignments. Any family thing, whatever the family subject we do, like yesterday was history, um, I will sometimes write that up here too, but sometimes I just throw that in, surprise them. Also, read alouds and things that we do as a group, I don't necessarily put up here. This is just their personal responsibilities so that I know where they are and they know what's expected of them this morning. On this shelf here is where I keep our records, our homeschooling records. Several of you asked um, yesterday, on yesterday's video, how I keep a a log of things since we do delight directed learning and you still can and we still are required to here in Missouri we have to keep a log book where we show um, just the amount of time that's spent on individual subjects and what's done and then we have to keep samples of their work and so I keep that in a very easy to access area right here so that I, I can keep up with it and it doesn't become a chore so I have my kids every child who is of the age that I need to keep records on them I have a color-coded file folder for because all of my kids are color coded and inside this folder I stick anything that they do that's like writing very occasionally for our history our story of the world they like doing the tests <laughs> um, 
that just shows you how infrequently we do actual tests around here. They think it's fun. When I pull out that testing book once in a while and give them a test to do, they really get a kick out of it. And so those I stick in here. Um, and any other, if they write a letter, like let's say they um, write a long pen pal letter, I'll make a photocopy of it and stick it in here sometimes just to show things that they've written. Um, all of Bella's papers that she does for her 4-H, I have copies of those in here. I even have like Elsie for her American Heritage Girls troupe. They made these books about living in the United States, so I stuck that in here. Just anything related to school, I start sticking in these files, and then at the end of the school year, I can pull this file out, put it in my big file cabinet, and start a new one for the next year. So it's just a very easy way to keep track of what they do. Then this book here is my log book. See if I can pull it out without knocking stuff down. Nope. This is my logging book that I will keep out on the table to make it easy for me to, um, let me try to get to one that's finished here. What, buddy? Well, you've got animals crammed up in the top, so you need to move the animals around and make it easier to close. So it'll kind of show you like, okay, we did a little president's quiz on the president's app, which I will show you on another day. Or we worked in our nature study notebooks, or I read aloud to the kids. I jot that all down here. And then here I have people divided up into individual. Um, this is just my four school age children. And I'll say, okay, this is what they did for math. She wrote someone a letter today. She read from a book. I'll just kind of jot things down here. They worked on a coding online program, so I'll jot that down. Um, and then I take these times and I write them out over here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Thank you, Elsie. I'm trying to do too many things at once. So anyway, that gives me a log to satisfy our state requirements and make sure that I'm um, just crossing all my T's and dotting all my I's. On the front here, this was an old paper I made a couple years ago um, that I hung on the refrigerator to just give me an idea of some of the things that we like to do and about how much time we usually spend working on those things. So it just kind of triggers my mind sometimes if I want to go back and, oh, let's do some handicrafts or a baking class. Just gives me some ideas about that. That's okay, let me get to my pancakes. It's way too small. What? Just a minute. Ask me that in just a minute. I'm starting some sourdough pancakes here. So, Woo, let's let that cool off for just a second. Okay, right down here we have this sturdy basket, and this holds dry erase boards and clipboards so that they are easy to access, and also um, these multiplication charts. Over here on this wall, we have a, a hanging wire basket that subscriber gave this to us. It's sturdy and it's wonderful. So I will link that in the description box also. Here we keep supplies um, easily accessible to kids. And then in this drawer here, this is just our random school supply drawer that is used very, very often. So you can see here we keep dry erase markers and we need more black ones. We are really running low. This, I don't know why it's in there. Scale, this is just random little pieces of paper. Um, we use punch cards for um, some things, like for math, just as a fun motivator. Math is really the only one we're using it for right now, right? So um, after they complete all 20 punches, they get to choose a, a prize from our prize box. We have different things up there. It just kind of gives a motivation and something to look forward to. So after they do a math lesson, they punch off Samuel, I like your design you're punching with there. Big, small. Also, um, we do these things called clue cards. So after kids, when they're learning something new, a new concept, they are free to make a little card to remind themselves of that concept so that they don't have to keep looking back to the um, lesson where it was taught. They can just glance on there. Oh, yeah, I remember how to do that. And so we just kind of keep those there. Um, I suppose over time we can start throwing some away because there's a lot that are unused here. This is our other office supply drawer with just random, you know, pens and glue and, yeah. Obviously, lots of people use it, which is why it's not totally organized. On the other side of the room, we have this just, I keep my laptop stuck in here and other random things that we need for homeschooling. This basket has our... Um, headphones in it and some actually camera stuff because obviously we have a lot of 
camera activity going on in this house. On the wall here we have our scratch map, which if any of you are new subscribers, you may not know about this, but this is our subscriber map. So we asked at the beginning of the year, yes, be, don't be too loud, okay? Lydia's sleeping up there, okay? At the beginning of the year, we asked viewers to tell us where they were from around the world, and as people tell us, we scratch them off on this map. Isn't that super fun? We do have someone in Russia, but I was waiting to hear back from her of which one of these she's from, because she didn't tell me. So, yeah, it's just kind of a fun geography thing that we do, and we get to learn where all of you are from. Nope, don't turn the light on. Thank you. Down our little hallway. What do we have here? Yeah. That's James' picture. James made that when we were still doing our CBS classes. We can't wait till they resume again in the fall, but this is our art board. This is actually just a piece of cattle fencing that we got at a hardware yeah. store. I spray painted it black, and then we got these little clips from Ikea that just hang on it. And so it provides a spot for us to display all the beautiful artwork. You made that? That's right. They did finger painting yesterday. We really like the Arteza finger paints. I'll put a link to those as well. And they made a lot of pretty pictures yesterday. Over here, excuse me, Bella. This is one more shelf that we just have games on. We are a game enjoying family. We also have some crayons up there, a globe, random box of game parts. And then down here, I have binders. So these binders are where the kids store some of their things like um, their, in the past um, little papers that they've written about what they learned in history and the coloring sheets that go with it. We enjoy putting them in these um, plastic pages because it just makes it fun to look through, it makes it feel extra special. Jeremiah is working on this activity, which is nice for a small house because it all folds up into this little case. It is this um, product from Arteza, and actually I just looked it up and I had a 10% off coupon for the whole website that they gave me to share with you. And I, I mentioned it a while ago, but I just realized it actually expires on the 15th, which is in a couple days. So if you want to look in the description box for that link and it will take you to their website, that's where we get our watercolor pencils that I keep out because they really like those. And um, they have drawing paper and just any kind of art supply. And then also these kids' school supplies. So check out the link for that. Should we show everybody our mixing song? Yeah. This is when we need to, yeah, he's getting vigorous. When we need to take turns with kids mixing, we sing the mixing song, and we've been singing this since Bella and Leo were small. And it, you're the only person here right now, but let's show everybody how we sing it. Mixing time, mixing time, it is James mixing time, mixing time, mixing time. Now it's mommy's turn. <gasps> mixing time, mixing time. It is mama's mixing time. Mixing time, mixing time. Now it's James' turn. Good job. <laughs> You're not supposed to be holding the eggs. Look how pretty those are. Yummy. We need a plate so we can. Yummy! Ready for a reading lesson? No! No! You're no. okay, James. You wanna be? No. Alright, read. Let's start right here. Mom! Red! Aww. Rod! Cat! Act! Sock! Water, please. No. Walk. 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 Yes. Walk. Get your water. Good job. Okay, read me those. Good. Very good. Okay, now we're gonna play the rhyme game. Are you ready? Hi. Rhyme these sounds with Anne. Anne. 
Yes. And? Sand. Mm -hmm. And? Fine, problem by problem. <laughs> Are you in for lunch break? It's kind of breakfast. It's kind of breakfast, it's kind of lunch. <laughs> Papa, silly. A lot of our learning happens outside of our little house. And in the spring, a lot of it happens with gardening and planting and work in the barn a lot more than we actually spend sitting at the table in there. So I'm going to show you a quick update of what we've been doing the last couple weeks. For those of you who have not seen our videos, we actually enlarged our garden. Bella and I put this fence in. Our garden used to just be that small area, just those five beds. So we quadrupled it and made this big space. We were having some Bible time on Sunday on this blanket and it's still there. So that Kids are kind of enjoying sitting out there and picnicking. But we have started the Back to Eden gardening method. We've never done this before, but we've been carting in trailer after trailer of mulch. We actually had a huge mulch pile on our property, so we're just carrying it from one end of things over to the other. So this is where we're at. We have all of these things coming up and looking really good. Did you come out here to help me tour? I came out here to go to the store check. Oh, okay. Peas are doing well. We've got some flowers in here. This is Samuel's garden. He's in the middle of mulching the rest of his garden. In the middle. Oh yeah. So he put some I pieces of paper down. Them. We're putting paper down to cut the weeds from coming he through. And then a layer them. of mulch on top. So that's what he he's in the middle of. Ah, uh, well let's check the forecast and see if there's rain coming. You need to keep going with your paper and your mulch there, buddy. And then this area I haven't planted yet, so that is coming up. We still have our little seedlings, the ones that we haven't put in the garden. We have them on our picnic table. And they are getting big. Look at those tomato plants. This is so exciting, guys. This is the first year that I have grown our starts from seed all by myself. <laughs> so whenever we're not watering, we cover them up with this plastic. It seems to be going well. Some of you are asking about how it was going with our rabbits that we got. So Jason actually built this incredible tractor is what they call it because it moves around. Isabella does all the care for the animals. So Bella, how often do you have to move this tractor? I'm gonna be moving it like every couple hours because they are- <laughs> They're that hungry. That Once a day is kind of what we had it. talked about, but she's moving it more if she's out here. So it's just, um, it has nothing on the bottom so that they can freely eat the grass and um, poop and fertilize the ground. And it's covered in chicken wire to protect them from, um, you know, predators. Oops, sorry, Pepper. And then over here he made an area that is siding so that they always have shade and shelter on this end of things. And Bella, you said you've been putting a tarp up on when really the weather's hot, really hot, just for a little and extra. And also for really rainy days. These are the chicks that she incubated. If you saw that video, that whole process, they're getting big. And they just like being in there with the rabbits, don't they? Uh -huh. Until yeah. they're bigger and they can be put with the flock. They, we keep them separate. All right, let's walk up and show them the our rabbit. fruit orchard. Oh yeah, and the other rabbit. It is such a beautiful day. So this is our male rabbit. We keep him separate, of course. He has a nighttime enclosure and then during the day, Bella likes to put him outside so he can enjoy some grass too. There he is. Benny the bunny. And then she just kind of covers that with a tarp so that he has protection also. You're gonna bring it over. Okay, while we're up here, let's show them what we've done on this end of our property. So I think I talked to you guys a little bit about the, boy, it was a while that they spent over a week working on finishing the fence and clearing this pasture. This used to look like wild, wild wilderness. It had all kinds of crazy stuff growing oh, up yes. and shrubs and it was just a mess. So they cleared all of this, 
put up this fence. So this is ready to receive large animals. And actually, we have some someone coming to occupy this pretty soon. We'll tell you about that in a week or so. So up here is what we're turning into our fruit orchard. These are the trees that we planted, which you saw us do that. So we mulched all of these according to the uh, back to Eden gardening method. We did heavy mulch on these. And then they need to be pruned. That's the next thing we need to learn and read about. But we also, um, Grandpa Mike brought us 30, Two, three. 32, <laughs> 33, Bella counted them, 30. little starts of blackberries. And so we've got all of these planted and mulched, and we're hoping these will just grow up along this fence. They're really great because they're thornless, so we'll have yummy blackberries in a couple years well, here, we I suppose. we got 35 now, two of the garden. Yep, we already had two, so this will be really nice. But again, this all had to be cleared too. It's been a big job that we've been doing here in the past few weeks. So Leo's working in the barn right now on some engine things. Isabella is now working on some things with rabbits. Silas just finished his math. The younger kids are playing. We want our kids to be more than just book smart. And so I consider all of this part of their education. We want them to be educated in all areas of life so that they can be well-rounded adults who can take care of themselves in many different areas. And so that's why my homeschool room tour isn't just the little room that the book work takes place, but it's all of this. And for those of you who live in the city, there are ways that you can also extend your education past just the table. I remember one time we got like an old printer, I think it was, that we let the boys take apart and, and look inside. They can work on their bicycles, they can learn about automobiles, they can learn about working in the kitchen or you know, taking care of checkbooks or bank statements. All of these things are beyond your typical table work, those core subjects, and they all are part of learning. So think outside the box of ways that you can expand your homeschool and just enjoy doing life together outside of just what's at the table. Be sure to leave in the comments below some ideas of how you've extended your homeschool room past just your typical sit down space. Let me know what works for you and maybe we can encourage one another with all of the different types of places that we live in around the world. I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.